This is the uh, Yezu F FT-1000D. This radio was uh, uh, sold uh, from the late 80s to the mid 90s. And it was Yezu's flagship model. It uh, is still today a very impressive radio with excellent performance and a very good receiver. It actually has two receivers, I'll show you that in a minute. Let's go over it uh, quickly. We're listening right now in the 20 meter bands. Bands can be selected here. Uh, you can also just type a frequency. That is just any general frequency you want to punch in. There is a uh, band stack register so you can call up multiple frequencies by just pressing the uh, the uh, band switch again. It has two uh, VFOs. Actually the second VFO is the second receiver and you can exchange that. Um, let's just start, start on the right, that might be easier. Power. This is for an additional receiver antenna. It has to do with the uh, additional uh, bandpass filter that is mounted in the back I'll show you that in a minute this is the mock switch just parallel to the uh, push to talk if I press that it will turn on the transmitter Fox is voice operated transmit the settings for that are on top here this is to dim the uh, display this is different meter functions on receive it's always S but on transmit you have ALC, compressor setting, power output, uh, SWR, uh, the collector current for the PA and the VCC for the uh, PA. Which is shown once you start to transmit. AGC, you can turn it off altogether. You can set it fast, medium, slow. For single sideband you would usually use medium or slow. This is a attenuator. This is uh, with the RF uh, uh, amplifier, receiver preamp. This is without receiver preamp. 6 dB attenuation, 12 and 18. For, 10 meter, for 20 meters I prefer to turn the RF uh, uh, preamp off because I got quite a high noise level here. As you can see, it doesn't make any sense to, uh, to turn on the uh, preamp. We got the microphone gain, we got RF power, you can set the output power from zero, well, one maybe, to uh, 200 watts, the radio can do 200 watts. We got the processor uh, setting, uh, we have the drive, this is used for the AM carrier, uh, amplitude modulation carrier, this is uh, Squelch. And we got a noise blanker that can be turned on here. We got... Uh, AF and we got RF gain. This is the RF mix. If you turn on the second receiver, you can mix which we uh, right now it's not on. If I turn it on, you can hear that I can then go to the second receiver and I can mix that. Right now it's the left. Now, right now it's the right. If I put this in the middle, I can hear them both. That's kind of messy if you do that, but it's possible. So that's the dual receiver. I'll show you that as well then. We got the mode switch. Lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, RTTY slash FSK, and packet. Uh, this is processor on off monitor. You can listen to your own signal. This is how you set that volume and That is also used as a spot If you want to do CW you can tune into the other station by just adjust, adjusting the pitch uh, Monitor uh, I already said that noise blanker on off noise blanker white sometimes that helps for a particular kind of uh, uh, interference uh, a, B, you can transfer the settings from A to B, which is what I just did. Here you can exchange A and B. You can call up uh, memory to VFO A. 
there you can see that and now I have done it by keeping it depressed this is the 60 meter bend by the way and here we're back again a repeater offset you can program that but it's set for 100 hertz for 10 uh, 100 kilohertz excuse me for 10 meter repeaters memory check you can see what's in the memories right now I have the 60 meter channels programmed into that from 1 to 6 5 and 6 and the rest is empty uh, so you can check that before you start to transmit split you can transmit here or receive here or vice versa dual I already showed you turns on the second receiver we got lock if you keep that if you click that then it won't change you can also do fast tuning by keeping this depressed you can also go by 100 kilohertz steps and the same is through here you can lock that one as well and here you can see whether you're transmitting on this one or this one and you can see whether the second receiver is actually activated uh, this I already showed you different bands or direct frequency entry if you want to set the frequency on this one you first click sub and then you go to whatever band you want to go so it's like a uh, a function key for the second receiver now this radio does have all the filter installed I'll show you that in a minute when we open up the bottom 2.4 kilohertz to 500 and 250 so that's all installed in this radio it even has the second filter for the uh, for the second receiver you know this second receiver also had an optional filter for 600 Hertz I think it was and that is installed in this one um, this I already showed you 100 kilohertz steps notch it obviously has a notch it has an APF that only works in CW audio passband filter this is to share to to move the contents of the vivo to uh, a, a channel so let's say we go for the first empty one which is six I keep this depressed so keep in mind what we have here I keep this depressed and now this will be in here there it is we just programmed that so now we have a six channel programmed and that's how you do that you just set the frequency here you set the channel number correct and then you just move it in there move it or copy it I should say all right what else do we have we got the keyer you are into CW break in you can set it for fast break in spot I already showed you that is to check whether you're on frequency with the other CW station we got uh, the memories showed you that already in effect we got a clarifier you can do that for transmit uh, for receive transmit or both or clear it again uh, APF and notch I showed you and this is interesting we have a real uh, width setting this is not just an IF shift this radio really sets the width of the communication channel and does that by sliding the 450 455 uh, kilohertz and the 8.2 megahertz crystal filters that I will show you later uh, by uh, by a mixer so by doing that you can make the passband smaller and that's the way it does that not really needed because we have all the filters already installed in this one but you can do it this is to uh, shift the carrier point for comfortable listening center is kind of the uh, the middle uh, what do we have here transmit receive clarifier and clear I showed you this is to turn on the tuner if I do that it will seek I'll have to show you that And there it is now we're tuned so the auto tuner basically quickly tests for a good uh, SWR it sets that there and then I will remember that so if I go to another frequency or slightly different frequency in this case then it will retune that again and as you can see you see weight it says that means it automatically calculates what it should be in between those points so it's an intelligent tuner that's in there and it can deal with SWRs as bad as 
3.0 don't go above it and the voltages get too high but uh, 3.0 which is uh, for most antennas that are not optimal you can easily uh, correct and that's uh, in a nutshell what this radio can do we will check the uh, uh, different power levels on the different bands modulation is always interesting to see and hear but uh, as you can see this is a very impressive radio this particular one is like mint it took me a long time to find this one and it has uh, all thinkable options installed oh I was going to show you the uh, the settings that you don't use every day we have that here we got the uh, fox gain anti get anti fox and delay that is the uh, voice operated uh, transmit receive we can set the uh, FM gains independently this is to um, set that second receiver for instance if you connect the stereo headphones you can either listen to mix both receivers stereo or mono uh, so you can switch it to either the left or the right or you can hear both of them this is uh, a test oscillator of 10 kilohertz for certain uh, uh, verifications backup there is a backup butter battery you can turn that off if you don't use the radio for a while here you can see the CD, uh, set the CW tone right now it's set for what you heard earlier but you can uh, set different ones well, I guess you gotta reboot the radio for that but you can set different uh, CW pitches if you don't like this one you can go to another one the manual explains how to do that this is the uh, packet and RTTY uh, 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 tones you can do low tones high tones you can set different uh, uh, shifts but usually you would not use this because most modern TNC's actually are used in the single sideband mode but this radio can actually shift create a shift directly from the synthesizer and here you can set the uh, shift settings for that and now we have it closed again so those are the settings that you don't uh, use every day let's have a look at the uh, at the back what kind of settings we have there here you see the uh, back of the radio the so-called rear apron we have the sub rx uh, module bpf1 installed in this one which was standard for the ft 1000 d this allows you to have a separate antenna independent of the main rf filters for the receiver and that means that you can operate the uh, the second receiver on different bands without this filter it's not possible you can only receive uh, the same things in the same I mean different things in the same band uh, of course we have uh, ground we have uh, uh, an additional RX antenna output just uh, see what we all have here voltage IF out this is band data for an amplifier or a tuner external tuner packet data in and output AF phone patch external ALC for an amplifier push to talks parallel to the microphone basically uh, this is the CAT interface that allows computer control for the transceiver RTTY separate input DVS2 not 100% sure, uh, sure what that is I would have to open the manual speaker key fuse and the ID plate as you can see this is the uh, uh, heatsink for the amplifier and the power supply amplifier is underneath here you can't really see it I don't know if that shows it and here you see the uh, regular board that I showed you earlier here a quick look at the inside top side speaker obviously here are the controls that you don't use every day can be set here uh, this unit does have the high stability oscillator master oscillator from which all frequencies are derived this is the TCXO1 this is the harmonic filter for the PA 
this is the regulator board which makes all the internal voltages underneath there is the power amplifier 200 watts you can't see it um, this is the filter uh, block for the uh, power supply has a linear power supply not a switcher uh, advantage is that you don't have any RF hash the downside is that the radio is pretty heavy as you can see the radio can be set for all international voltages as well as US of course that can be done here and it currently is set for 127 volt which is our US voltage let's have a look at the other side and here a look at the uh, under side this is the RF unit this has all the receiver filters so each band segment has a uh, has its own filter to keep strong broadcast out of the mixer and here you see the uh, IF and the exciter part that is uh, this section with all the filters as you can see all optional filters are installed in this one and those are the 8.2 megahertz filters and there is another uh, round of filtering at 455 kilohertz there is actually uh, more filters than that there is the smaller filters here you see the what they I think they call it the AF unit I think that's also where the modulator and demodulator reside as you see it's uh, quite a radio the side view what you see here is the a second receiver and this radio has the 600 Hertz CW slash RTTY filter installed that was an option but it's there so this is basically the uh, second receiver actually also a very good receiver Tune about the band a bit. It's during the day, 7, uh, seven megahertz, 40 meter is not really open. This is the other receiver. It has a uh, second receiver. So you can either go to this receiver or mix both of them or go to this one. That works really nice. Let's go to 20 meters. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you is the frequency accuracy. There is a little trick for that. We are at uh, 15 megahertz, which is the uh, what is it, WWV reference frequency. And what I have done, I have deliberately tuned it 300 hertz lower than the 15 megahertz carrier in upper sideband. So in that case, you hear a 300 hertz tone, which is what you hear now. Now the other receiver I have put at uh, 15.0003 so that's 300 hertz too high in lower sideband. You can, you can hear it here. So I have a 300 hertz tone on the high side here and on the low side there. Now if I now mix these two I can hear the beat frequency between them which is the frequency error for the radio actually twice the error you can hear the beat frequency between the two it's about two Hertz so the real error here at this frequency is one Hertz it's half of the beat you can hear that it's really the beat because you can hear if I deliberately tune this away 
you can hear the difference. And here we are at the frequency itself. It's about two, three hertz speed, I would say. So the frequency error is one, one and a half hertz, which is pretty damn good for this radio. You can actually set it even more accurate, but that doesn't make much sense. This is uh, excellent, uh, excellent result. All right, let's see what kind of uh, power we get from this radio. It's specified for 200 watts. Uh, for that, we have the bird watt meter. Bird 43. I'm going to switch to the dummy load. Do not bother anyone. Here you can see both the display as well as the watt meter. Let's go to 1.7. That is 160 meters. That was modulated. Let's do CW, it's a bit easier. About 230 watts. Three and a half megahertz CW. That's 80 meters. We got again about 240. 40 meter band. About 230, 230 watts. 30 meter band, same again, 20 meter band, CW, same again, 17 meter band, 18.1 megahertz, about 230 watts, 15 meter band, same again, 12 meter band, same again, this is 10 meter, 28.3, the same again, and 29, that is uh, FM, 29.6 FM, 29.6, and sideband, 1, 2, 3, four, five. that works pretty good too. So the radio is specified for 200 watt, it gives off about 230 watt into this Dummy load, which actually got pretty warm by now, and that works quite well. Let's see what the modulation sounds. Okay, so we're back on the 20 meter band to uh, test some modulation here. I'm going to switch back to the dummy load. I have the radio at 14.250, and here I have my Yezu FT817. Also at 250. We are in upper sideband mode for both radios. And let's uh, see what I get here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That sounds pretty good. Let's turn on the processor. One, two, three, four, five. This is with processor. Uh, maybe a little bit less processing here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Wow, that looks pretty good. One, two, three, maximum processing. And here we are at about 20%, maybe 50% processing. That works pretty good too. Uh, let's try lower sideband quickly. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it works pretty good too. No complaints there. Modulation works fine. Now I wanted to show you how to uh, set this radio for CW. First, obviously, you set it in CW mode. Then you got to make sure with the spot that his tone sounds the same as yours. So this is wrong. This is right. If you do that, you will be exactly in the passband of these filters. So, this is 2 kilohertz, kilohertz, this is 500. This is 250. And you're exactly in the passband. If I shift it away, then he disappears. And now he is exactly in my passband for 250 hertz. Sounds pretty damn nice. I can also add the uh, APF. APF is the uh, audio pass filter that brings it up even more. So 
but this allows you to uh, listen to very weak CW stations. This is the perfect CW machine. Let's do a quick uh, frequency modulation test. I got uh, 29.6 on the dummy load. Still. Put a little bit of squelch in there. I got the uh, Yezu mo monitor receiver also in FM. One, two, three. We got uh, good power. One, two, three. Throttle back a little bit. 50 watts. And the modulation sounds quite good. One, two, three, four, five. 29.6. And that works as well. Let's try amplitude modulation quickly. One, two, three, four, five. One, oh, I got a temperature carrier a bit. One, two, three, four, five. That works pretty good too, amplitude modulation. Oh, 50 watt carrier is the maximum one you should do. One, two, three, four, five. That works very good actually, amplitude modulation works as well. No complaints. Okay, that was basically it. The Yezu FT1000D radio from the 90s, was top of the line model, it still carries its weight in today's uh, market. A very good receiver, excellent power level, dual receiver, and lots of features. And loaded with crystal filters. This particular one is uh, in mint condition. I think I showed you that already. This is the uh, top. Here you see the sides. This thing is like it looks. Uh, it looks straight out of the box. Talking about the box, we still have the box. This is the uh, box with inserts. It is literally like brand new. Excellent receiver. I like these uh, plasma displays. They last forever, they don't go black like these LCDs. It's very reliable. They're actually the same displays they use in the aircraft radios. They also use plasma because it's much more reliable than LCD. Excellent radio. Thank you for watching. Populated area here uh, between Baltimore and Washington. You're looking at close to 10 million people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Oh, very good. Beautiful job, Cornell. Beautiful, beautiful job. Uh, doing an amazing job. Uh, you're about the only DX station I hear on the entire band. Uh, not you.